Why do we suffer at the hands of these politicians? Don't you know politicians work for you? Hey. You're the boss. You hire them and you fire them. Look at their campaign. You know what they do? They audition. Yeah. Hello, this is Jerry Williams from Talk Labor. So glad to be back with you again. Um, we got some things we want to talk to you about today that's very important. And uh, we want to make sure that you understand that it's left up to you how your life is going to be. If you lay down, if you go to sleep, you bury your head in the sand, you know, everything will be taken away from you. I'm going to give you some examples today. We're going to talk about some of those things. We're going to talk about the lawsuit that we filed here in the state of Illinois and what they did in Michigan. You know, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be shocked. Uh, you're going to talk about this guy from uh, New York with the, with the piece, piece of place, Papa John's or whatever his name is. You know, I want to show you how, how when you make a move, how things change. Um, we're going to talk about the White House briefing. We're going to talk about Turkey. Not the kind you eat at Thanksgiving, but the country itself. <laughs> Let me start off by saying this. Um, you know, I talk to the um, people that work at the Chicago Transit Authority, and I don't want to go over all again how everything works. But the thing is, they're taking money away from them that basically, in my opinion, is totally illegal. They're making these people pay. These people, the Chicago Transit Authority guys, pay an average of $3,000 a year for their health care when they retire. Not for their health care while they're working now, when they retire. And, um, but, you know, when they retire, they're 64 years old. They have to be 64 now. Used to be you could retire whenever you got 25 years in, but now you got to be 64 years old. When you retire 64, the next year you're on Medicare. So they're taking out $3,000 on average a year from each individual, and you got 9,000. You all figure that up now. Use your calculators and do that. 9,000 people at uh, $3,000 uh, a month, I mean, sorry, a, a year, and see how much money that is. I think it comes up to something like $270, $270 million that they've taken out on you since the time they started this. And I tried to tell you guys that that was illegal and it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened. Now, I got right here from the Detroit Free Press. And go in there and find that Detroit Free Press and pull up that article on the pension and the uh, teachers. They did the exact same thing to them that they did to us. They started, they just came and started taking the money out on them. They passed a bill in, in, in the, their uh, legislature in, sta in the state, and they just started taking the money out. So, and they did the same thing to us, but with one difference. Their union was protesting them. When I say there, I'm talking about Michigan. Your union here signed off on it and agreed to it. Okay? Now, they took it all the way to the Supreme Court, same way we did. 2010 is when they took it, took them eight years, took it all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said pay them back all that money because they're covered under the, and, and Michigan is one of those states just like us that have in their constitution, you can't do that if a person is vested. Pay them all their money back and with interest. So they, the state of Michigan is going to have to pay $550 million back. These are the active people along with the retirees. $550 million back. And that's the money that they took out plus the interest. Now, are they fighting it? No. The state uh, said that they're in the process of paying the money back. Nothing else they could do. Because there's no argument. The only reason we're still dragging with our uh, retirees is because the union signed off on it and the Chicago Transit trying to find anything they can to try to hold this up. But the Supreme Court has already spoken and said that the union do not 
represent retirees who retired prior to 2007. But these guys, so the state will distribute funds to individual school districts, which will then be tasked with repaying the employees. Mm -hmm. The total refund will include interest, he said. Me and the state will send roughly $554 million to the districts. That's the way it's supposed to be. But because your guys here signed off on it, you can't do it. Now, their union fault for them. You can't do it. Now, here's here's a kicker. One guy, when I was telling him we're gonna we're, we're fighting this, he says, "Well, Jerry, how are we gonna pay the money back? How is CTA gonna pay us back? <laughs> pay us back that money?" I said, "Man, listen. When they took the money from you, they didn't ask you how you gonna pay your house note. They didn't ask you none of that. Who cares how they pay it back? But just look. Here's what CTA does, and any company with any any fortitude, any sense does." The funding has been held in escrow. This is in Michigan. So Michigan will continue to have a balanced budget. It's not going to hurt them at all. They held it in escrow and they got interest, you know, and money back from investors on that money to pay everybody their money back. Nobody's hurt. The governor said, uh, said this in a statement, so we will not need to raise revenue or anything like that. Now, isn't that what we're talking about? Isn't that what we're talking about? I'm not, but I'm not one of those that are really concerned about what, where the CTA gets the money back from because they weren't concerned about where we had to get the money from. And you all got to start being that way. You know, Jerry's not an angry person. He used to call me the angry black man. Well, I'm black, but I'm not angry, though, you know. So we have to do this. Don't let CTA, um, you know, boondoggle you with this kind of stuff. Now, uh, I got listed here. The Snyder administration held $449,871,147 collected from school employees in escrow while the legal battle played out. You can just about bet CTA has a lot of that money that they took from us in escrow. This is not something that I know. This is not something that I've seen. But from my experience, as a um, president of a local, this is what they do. So they got that money, you know, they got 800 and plus million dollars in uh, the healthcare trust fund that they are not doing anything with that money. I told people, you all do this, any of you all. If you can find out what they're doing with that money that they took from you, if they, you can find out what they're doing, come back and tell me so I can say, hey, you know what, CT is really, 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 trying to do something for these guys because this is what they're doing, A, B, C, and D. But I know they're not. I know they're not. I'm the longest sitting union person on that uh, board, on that pension board. Um, when I left there, that was like nine years I sit there, and I know what they do. They are reaching into that cookie jar. They didn't put in the cookie. They didn't bake any. They didn't make any. They didn't buy any. All those cookies you put in there, we put in there. But they're sticking their hand in that cookie jar, taking that money. And they say, well, they ain't going to, they're not going to bitch about it. So what the hell? But as long as I'm here, I will. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that as we uh, go forward. Now, that was uh, the a little information on the lawsuit. Now, just for people who are really concerned, like I said, join the coalition. Reach out to Mr. Claude Funches. Reach out to Ronald Roach, Suzette Smith, Benny Benny Rogers from uh, 241, uh, Tommy Little, and they will sign you up because it's going to be very important that you are a member. Because my thing is, if you don't stand up for yourself, I the hell with you. We moving on. We moving on. We we uh we did this once. We filed a lawsuit against the CTA, the Fair Labor Standards Act, and uh, we filed a class action suit. The CTA challenged it in court. And one, the fact that we couldn't file a class action, but we could file a suit. But we had to go around and get everybody to sign consent forms that they want to be a part of the suit. We went around and could sign consent form myself, a um, very good friend of mine, and then we solicited other people to go around and just tell people, just sign for it. You don't have to, no, nothing's going to come to you. Uh, no harm is going to come to you. 
A lot of people, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Don't sign that. I wouldn't do it. They were trying to, you know, discourage people from signing. Well, here's the, make a long story short. Here's what happened. The people that signed on to the lawsuit got paid. Nobody got paid under $2,000. Some people got paid seven, you know, because we won that. We won that. And uh, that's because people participated. Now, you had other people, where's mine? It should have been a class action. You should have got out there and sued then. You know, you should have got out there and sued. You didn't sue? Tough. Tough on you. Same thing here with this coalition that we have. Step up. Be a part of it. We're not just here to say um, we want to get our money back. Of course we do. We don't get our money back. But we got other things looking. we're looking at. Like I said, the trades have no business sitting on that board representing anybody. Anybody. Should be a, a retiree sitting at that board. Um, CTA don't want to see that. And uh, quasi a couple of your union people don't want to see that. Because they, you know, doing things that you might think and I might think is illegal or at least immoral. So, you know, we're going to talk about that uh, again when I get some more uh, guests on that's uh, familiar with that. And um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm getting a little message. We're going to get a, we're going to take a, a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about Papa John. We're going to talk about Papa John. We'll just stay tuned. We'll be right back. Look around you. One in four kids in the U.S. faces hunger. It's not always easy to see the signs. But in this land of plenty, there are kids that don't know where they will get their next meal. Join Share Our Strength in Food Network and take the pledge to end childhood hunger here in America by 2015. Learn how at nokidhungry.org. Their next meal could come from you. All right. Okay, so we're back. You remember, as I promised you, we're going to talk about Papa John. Now, you remember Papa John's a pizza place? that got up and said, you know, well, these guys, Ka Kaepernick, getting up and taking a knee, and, the, and the, uh, his sales went down in, 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 um, uh, with his pizza, and you know, blah, blah, blah. He took that old racist attitude. And um, these guys, I think, uh, um, who was that? It was um, one of these Ku Klux Klan guys sent a letter to this guy, Schneider, Schnatter, and told him, we really loved what you're saying, and that's right, keep it going. And we said to you, stop buying the pizza. Don't buy it anymore. You know, since he feels that, you know, it's okay for cops to shoot and kill black, innocent, young black men and women, don't buy it anymore from him. And you know what, you all did that. You did that. The sales, the sales went down from the time he made that statement up until recently. 13%. 13%. And guess what? They got rid of him. Schneider. They got rid of him. He's gone. That's what I'm talking about. So don't let anybody tell you, well, you shouldn't boycott. Yes, you should. Why would you keep paying people money and they trying to cut your throat? So Papa John is one. And we're going to look at some of these others. They've been trying to bag off now. And I'm going to tell you who they are. Applebee's. Uh, um... Was that other Olive, Olive Garden? All of them, they're, they're trying to back off now and trying to change the tune. But, you know, we're going to keep our eye on them and we're going we're gonna to keep telling you about it, okay? But um, the company lost some something like $84 million in a short period of time. You know, and they got, hey, they told him he got to go. So, he's gone. As uh, a man say, the, 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 the White Sox is now, so he gone. Um... One other thing, um, the White House. I hate to even talk about this guy because, folks, he's a fool. We all know he's a fool. Um, media, sometimes I get you, you guys make me sick. I don't even know why you go and have press conferences when the clown won't even come out and talk. Every other president comes out and speaks for himself. Then they send their secretary out. But this clown won't even talk to you. He runs around hollering fake news like a little kid. But they've gotten so bad now, even the janky, uh, bad station, <laughs> Fox, 
is saying that they that they're worthless. That uh, it shouldn't even be in the press briefings because the girl don't know what she's talking about. She's a lie. She'll lie just as soon as she opens her mouth. How could you live with yourself? Maybe, maybe I've just been, my mother raised me a little different. How, how can you live with yourself like that? <laughs> when you, you know, everything that comes out of your mouth is a damn lie. And you try to, and you try to cover for it. You try to cover for it. It is so, so ridiculous. But uh, uh, Huckleby is her name. You all know her. And uh, I think that um, she's supposed to be leaving at the end of the um, year. But you know you're going to put another liar in there because you have another one in there. We are not going to rest until this fool is out of the White House. He's making the country look so bad. All the other countries are saying now, that, oh man, I mean, they're really talking about the United States. I mean, they're really, you, ooh, this man took, Obama put you up on a mountain, this boy putting you up under the ground. He's up under the ground. He's like a, a, a warthog, you know. And people don't understand that. I, I'm not just saying this. Donald Trump has been a broke man for a long time. He cons his way through what he wants to do. He cons his way. He uses hate. He got the little hate group. About 30% of America has always been that way. Some of you young guys might and ladies might not know. But me and some of the other people that grew up, baby boomers, we know that these hate mongrels have been there. For a long time. When I was a teenager, these hate mongrels are there. So, yeah, they support him. He's going to be gone. They're going to kick him out. I'm talking about America's going to kick him out. But uh, now he tries to play you, you know, tell Democrats, well, we're going to do infrastructure, and I'll get them over here, you know. Now, they, I don't think they're going to play that game. I don't think they're going to play that game. But um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take another little break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to discuss a little sports. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Look around you. One in four kids in the U.S. faces hunger. It's not always easy to see the signs, but in this land of plenty, there are kids that don't know where they will get their next meal. Join Share Our Strength in Food Network and take the pledge to end childhood hunger here in America by 2015. Learn how at nokidhungry.org. Their next meal could come from you. Hey, we're back. And uh, as I promised you, we're going to talk a little bit about sports, but not uh, what you think. You know, we're going to talk about uh, what's going on over there in Turkey. Um, we got a basketball player, Cantor. Plays with, played with the New York Knicks, I believe. Uh, Turkey has, you know, if you, let me bag up a little bit. Um, Michael Flynn was hired by Turkey to try to kidnap a, a, uh, activist from Turkey who was living in the United States, get him back over there so they can execute him. And, uh, he was unable to do it. I think the FBI stepped in and broke that up. <laughs> now, now they want to get this, uh, young basketball player. And his name is Cantor. He's from Turkey. They want to get him back over there. They said they want to get him over there so they can make him stand trial because he said some bad things about their leader. Trump is over there praising Turkey, how great a country it is. It's such a great country, and, you know, he's over there praising. But this is what this guy is trying to do. Now, Cantor was, was detained in Romania on May 20th because um, his Turkish passport was canceled, and they thought they had him. You know, this was, um, oh, back here some time ago, and they thought they had him. But the United States went in and got him, brought him home. Now, he's not playing basketball for the Knicks, but he says he will continue to fight to the day he dies because of the corruption and all that's going on over there in Turkey. We got it here. This man here, they found out he's been tied to the mob. If and when Fuller does his investigation, if he if he turns everything over and turns everything in, you are going to be surprised. Not just this Russia thing. Let's don't play games with each other. We're not like the people in the press that want this news. Our thing is this. If that man will not show his taxes, he's got a reason not to. Because he knows it's going to show. 
he's broke, first of all, and the uh, collaboration he's done with Russia. We all know that. So let's don't play the game. Let's don't get caught up in that. Let's just be ready to go to them polls when they tell us it's time to go. Okay? So um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything about this guy this year or well, the years out. We can do something about the people around him. All the legislators and all, not just the congressmen and senators, but we're talking about governors. We're talking about here in Illinois, the, the, the Republican governor is on it. He know he gone. He know he's gone. And uh, we got to fight for the unions too because um, they're in bad shape. You know, we got to try to work with them. Try to work with the unions. And um, I think that, um, I think America's going to be all right, but it's going to set you back about 30, 40 years. That's what he came in here to do. You know, with his, I'm going to build a wall, and I'm going to, you know, these these uh, hate mongrels, they're fine people too, you know. But anyway, that's where we are, and uh, we're not going to stand for that. One other thing now, um, we talk about bowling, and... Um, we're still going to attempt to have that bowling uh, tournament at the end of the season with the teams. And I'm, I'm going to get that information to you and bring it back to you so you can see what we're talking about. We were like, we, we got about, um, I think we got three uh, bowling establishments that's on board right now. And we like to have about eight or 10 and it could be a lot of money for the guys, you know? So we're going to, we're going to talk to you more about that. And uh, I want to talk to you again about the um, uh, the black organization, TNBA, the Black Bowling Organization. They, they could do a lot. They, they do a lot for you right now. Because if you shoot uh, 300, they give you an award. You know, like I'll get a ring or a watch or something like that for the 300 I just shot. USBC won't do that. You pay them, you, you pay them their money and they you just don't get nothing. You get a little old piece of paper saying, yeah, you shot a nice cane. But TNBA actually gives you the award, continues to give you the award. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Uh, like I said, I got uh, one of the representatives. I've already talked to him. I'm going to get him on the show, Mr. Tom Tobin. Okay? But we're going to do this. We're going to wrap it up. And like I said, if you have things to talk about, talk. If you can't, you know, go to... Um, Talklabor at gmail.com and put your put your questions on there and put your thoughts on there and we'll talk about them on the air. Um, we got one young lady uh, that signed up with the coalition. Uh, beautiful person. She was on there. I got a guy that called me all the way from Nebraska. Sign me up, Jerry. <laughs> put him on. And uh, Atlanta. He wants to be on there. Got him on there. I told you we won't get 5,000. We're going to get 5,000. But in the meantime, Hey, y'all do what you do. Make sure you continue to talk. Make sure you continue to listen to Talk Labor. We're going to go a little bit broader in, in the, in the uh, coming weeks. And um, we're going to blast our followers. Okay? And I think you're going to really like that. You're going to really like that. And now what I want you to do is take a look at this. You Young people think you were dancing. And you know, I'm not putting you down. You got some nice dances, you know. I can't do them. I like seeing you do them, you know. But take a look at this clip on our way out, and we're going to see you again next week on Talk Labor. Boogaloo is probably one of the hardest dances in the world. I used to get dizzy at doing it. And I'll go right straight through the dances and give you a variation. It'll blow your mind. I used to do a little tap dancing, too. The Boogaloo. Fuck your chicken. The old James Brown. Mashed potatoes. <clears throat> and uh, camel walk. I did this in the Tammy show. Also, uh, robot. Oh, get 
down. Soul swing. 